In this video, we're going to take a look at um, mixed cell references in Excel. We've already looked at uh, relative cell references and absolute cell references. And a mixed cell reference is one that is part relative and part absolute. And probably the best way to explain them is to show you an example of how you might use them. So let's get started here. Let's put a plus sign in here and a 1 and a 2 and then select both of them, get your fill handle, drag it down to row 11, so I've got the numbers 1 through 10. And then across the top here, I'm going to put a 1 and a 2, and I'm going to take the numbers, select both of them, and I'm going to go all the way to the number 10 over here as well. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to create a simple addition table where any number down here in the body of the table is determined by adding a number over here and a number up here. So uh, any cell is going to be the sum of the number over here at the left and the number up here at the top. And before we do that, let's let's just uh, clean it up a little bit here. I'm going to do a non-adjacent selection. Hold the control key down and click and drag. And uh, I want to center everything. And I want to make them bold as well. And um, I'm going to put a thick box border around them and then I'm going to put a thick box border around this cell right here and I'm going to actually I'll wait on the rest of it to do a border because um, if I do some other formatting and some copying, copying also um, copies all the formatting. Okay, now what I want here is um, you know whenever I'm in a cell I want it to be the sum of this number over here and this number up here. So the first term is always going to come from column A, but it's the, the row is going to vary depending on you know how far down I am here. And uh, the second number is always going to come from row 1, but uh, the column letter for that is going to vary depending on how far across the table I am. So in the first term, the column number is going to, or column letter rather, is going to be absolute, but the row number is allowed to change as I copy that formula down the page. So let's go in here and start with an equal sign, and uh, the A does not change, so I've got to put a dollar sign in front of it to keep it from changing, and then uh, I want uh, row two, and I want to add uh, this number up here, and I can just click on it, uh, but if I do. Uh, whoops, it doesn't put any dollar signs in for me, so I have to click there and I have to put a dollar sign in saying don't change the one. Okay, and that's it. Now a one and one is two, and if I go down here and grab my fill handle and drag it down, and uh, unfortunately I can't drag it down and over at the same time, so I have to drag down. Let go of the mouse, get your fill handle again, and drag across. And let's do a little bit of formatting here. We'll center everything, and uh, now I'll do that thick box border around the outside. If I click out here now, um, you can see the borders. And um, actually, you know, in a case like this, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to do a little shading here on the headings as well. So let's uh, grab those and let's uh, do a little bit of shading there. And that tells the person that's viewing this that uh, those are definitely different from the numbers that are down here with the white background. Okay, now. So I did one formula here, and I copied all the way down, all the way across. And no matter where you click in here, uh, if you double click, it will show you that the first term, the blue term, is coming from column A because it doesn't change, and the second term is column coming from row one. Okay. Now let's just actually, this is A8. Okay. Now let's go here and double click, and it's A7, and let's double click here, and it's A6, and double click here, and it's A5, and so on. Okay. Um, so the row number is changing, but the A never changes. I can go any place else I want to. The A is always the same, okay? But the row number varies depending on the row I'm on. And the same thing applies with, uh, let's look at the red term now. Uh, that's coming from row 1. And if I double click over here, it's still coming from row one. If I double click over here, it's still coming from row one. If I double click here, it's still coming from row one. So um, anytime you have a table like this where a number at the intersection of a row and column is determined by the value that's over here and up here, uh, you're always going to use mixed cell references. Always. 
So you do, you know, like a multiplication table or um, some other kind of table. A wind chill table is one um, that uh, uses uh, the wind speed on on one of these rows or columns, one of the headings, and it uses the temperature on another one. Uh, and it's a combination of the two that determines the wind chill. Um, let's take a look at um, another simple example here. Uh, let's create a new sheet down here by clicking on the plus sign. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do a little uh, loan problem. And uh, we're going to put in loan amount and 100,000. Okay. Notice you can do the formatting as you type it in rather than just typing in a plain number and then going over here and formatting later. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a table here. And um, I'm going to have years going across the top. And we're not going to do this for every number of years. We're going to go in five year increments. So 5, 10, and I'm going to go back and select both of those and then I'm going to click and drag and we'll go up to 30 years here for different uh, loan periods and over on the left side here we're going to put the uh, rate and uh, we're going to start off with uh, 0.05 I'm sorry 0 0.50 percent and then 1.00 percent and so we're going to go in half percent increments over here and I'm going to just get it started select this and we'll go down here to um, 9%. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to compute the loan amount, uh, the payment amount for the loan, um, you know, at five years and half a percent interest, or at 10 years and half a percent interest, or 15 years and two and a half percent interest. And every number that I compute here is going to depend on three things. It's going to depend on the amount of loan up here. It's going to depend on one of these numbers over here. And it's going to depend on one of these numbers here. Now, this is never moving. That's going to be an absolute cell reference. Uh, this is going to be a mixed cell reference. This is going to be a mixed cell reference. And let's, uh, let's get going. Um, this uses a function we haven't looked at yet called the payment function. And it's under formulas here. And it's under financial. And they're all listed in alphabetical order here. And the one we want is called PMT. And we get this little function arguments dialog box that wants to know what the rate is. Well, the rate's coming from over here. But that column is never changing. So that needs a dollar sign in front of uh, the A. And the number of periods, oh, and then I have to uh, divide by 12. Because when you do the uh, payment function, if you're computing monthly payments, you have to have the monthly rate. So take the annual rate and divide it by 12. And the number of periods for the loan, if you're doing monthly payments, it's going to be the years, which is this. But that row is never changing. So, whoops. I want B4. And uh, the row 4 is never changing, so I need to put a dollar sign in front of it. And if I want to compute the number of periods, and my periods are one month long, and I've got five years, I've got to multiply that by 12. So normally, if you're doing monthly payments, you're going to have to divide the rate by 12, and the number of periods is going to be the years multiplied by 12. And then the present value is the amount that you're borrowing, and it's this number right here. And I want to put dollar signs in there because that's never going to move. Uh, these two arguments are optional. Uh, you can tell they're optional because they're not in bold in the descriptions over here on the left. If it's in bold, it's required. Um, it'll use zero here, which means you've paid off the entire loan, which is what you want. Uh, and I'll use zero here, which means that you're uh, making your payments at the end of the month, which is also what we're going to go with. So click on OK, and it tells me how much my monthly payment is going to be for five years. And I can copy that down, and I can take that, and I can copy it across. And when I do that, some of my numbers here are a little bit too big. The pound signs mean that the column is not wide enough. And rather than display part of the number for you, it doesn't display any of the numbers. So let's make everything wide enough for this column right here. And I went a little bit further than I needed to just because it was starting to look kind of crowded. Uh, notice these are always negative numbers. And actually, Excel is making them negative twice for us. It's uh, When they show up in red, that means they're negative. If they have parentheses around them, that means they're negative. And if you don't want that, if you want these numbers to be positive, 
which is what I think most people would want. Just put a minus sign in front of it to turn the sign around. Uh, click and drag, click and drag. There we go. Now, let's double click on any cell here. Uh, the blue term is coming from this column. The red term is coming from up here. And the purple term is coming from up here. Let's pick another one. Double click. Blue term from column A. Um, red term from row 4. Purple term from B1. That's the absolute reference. And no matter where you click in here, uh, you get the same thing. The first term comes from column A. second term comes from row 4. And the last term comes from B1. So this is a good example of um, using both absolute cell references and mixed cell references. And let's uh, let's uh, clean this up just a little bit more here. Um, let's do a merge and center on this one, and let's make that a, uh, a title. And uh, then let's go over here and right click on column A and let's insert something over here. And I want to put uh, the word rate over here. And I want that also to be, you can merge and center in the vertical direction as well. And this is a time when you might actually want to rotate your text. And you might want to center it. And uh, you might also want to make it uh, a little bit bigger. So. Uh, there we go, and uh, these column headings uh, look a little funny because they're so far over to the right. Let's uh, uh, center those, and that looks a little bit better. And as long as we've got them selected here, it's always a good idea to make your headings look different from the rest of your data. Let's do a heading 3 on those, and on these, let's do a heading 4. Okay, and there you go. Uh, let's do one more thing here. Let's put a label on this and let's do uh, heading four on that one as well. And there you go. Um, all you have to do is go up here and change the amount and everything down here automatically gets changed using mixed cell references and absolute cell references.